that there comes a moment when we go to mess with moss and we ask ourselves if this is a good idea. And for the sake of the project, we're always like, yes. However, <laughs> somehow I manage to regret it almost every single time. If you have some scrap wood for these DIYs, by all means, use that. I stopped in the general purpose section at Home Depot because I could use some extra spare wood where they have the square dowels and the circular dowels. We're gonna grab one of these for $14.14. .14. It is the biggest circular dowel that they have. Well, at least that I could find. And if you don't wanna chop yours up, you sure can ask them at the store and they will cut it on up for you. Me, well, I'm gonna take my chances with my miter saw. I'm cutting down two little pieces, different sizes. I did not measure it. I just kinda eyeballed and I was like, this looks good and I rolled on with it. Since we're gonna be using these to make some faux wood logs, we really need to give these some rustic love. To do that, we're gonna just take a couple different tools and make some scrapes and some bumps and some bruises. You can certainly beat up your wood however you want. I decided to take some needle nose pliers I had sitting right next to me and this two-headed wonky looking hammer that I had hanging around. This way I could give all different types of little spots on our faux wood piece and it would be even more authentic by the time I was all done. For colors, I'm gonna start off with some black to smoosh in our little gaps that we have created here. And then we're gonna complete the look by smearing some of this antique Waverly wax using a baby wipe all over both of these. The worst part about distressing like this or creating realistic wood like this is actually getting the dark pigments inside of the divots. It's not as easy as you would think. I try to use a thin paintbrush and really get in there. Then you gotta kinda deal with the fact that you're layering different colors and you're starting with the darker tone. So you want to make sure that that darker tone ends up blending in with the top color that's light. Using a baby wipe actually helps with that because it's sort of damp. So it allows the smearing of the paint versus you being able to see one, a complete different color underneath of the other color and there's no blending or shading at all. I rubbed these pieces until I felt like all the colors were smooshed enough together that they resembled a little piece of wood. Then I took some of the paint that was left on the brush and started kind of dry brushing long strokes over the whole entire piece until there was nothing left. And then I'd tap, 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 tap a little bit more on there with the black paint and do some more distressing. And of course you skip this part if you're completely happy with yours. I want it to add some more dark tones in there. Now we're gonna deal with this moss. I don't know why I torture myself with this stuff. I gotta be honest though, it always looks like fire when you're done. You know what I'm saying? This stuff really does just add that extra oomph onto your projects when you pop it on there. But getting it put on there is usually a hot mess for me. I decided to use tacky glue and hot glue, not overlapping the two, but this way I had like an immediate hold and even though tacky glue is pretty sticky to start with, the hot glue really just helps to hold in place while the moss bonds to the tacky glue over time. When we go to mess with moss and we ask ourselves if this is a good idea. And for the sake of the project, we're always like, yes. However, <laughs> somehow I manage to regret it almost every single time. Sometimes I don't know when to quit <laughs> and decided to carry on and bring the moss down the side of both our logs just a little bit. And people put as much moss on your logs as you want. I just wanted to bring it down a smoosh because we're gonna add some of these cute little mini mushrooms that I found a Dollar Tree. And they had several different colors. I think it was like blue, purple, pink, and I just grabbed blue and pink 
and added some tacky glue. Well, be mindful with this because they don't really stay very easily. I mean, you know, you're kind of sitting them on top of this moss that we don't have much faith in to begin with. I also stuck a little dowel in the top of one of these with the butterfly and how adorable did these turn out. If you have scrap wood, grab whatever size would be perfect for this idea that we're about to create. I headed on over to the pre-cut section in Home Depot and grabbed one of these one by six by four pieces for just $6.65. Truth be told, my friends, I did not measure this. I just kind of put it in my miter saw and clamped it down and then cut what size I thought would be perfect for this wall planter. I am just going to keep this nice and rustic and use some antique Waverly wax. I'm going to apply this with a baby wipe and I'm going to apply it all over the entire piece of wood, especially if you're going to be selling pieces like this. It's a good thing to make sure you're also doing the back. Somebody's going to peek behind there. So just make sure you get that side done as well. These are some cleaned out Campbell soup cans. We're gonna give these a nice coat of paint and then we're going to attach them to our large piece of wood. Keep in mind whenever you're painting on different materials, you always wanna check the paint that you're gonna use and make sure it's gonna to adhere to that surface. I'm using DIY's clay base here. A good multi-surface or chalk paint also works good with this material. I ended up leaving some of the metal shining through so these were a little rustic. I want to use Dollar Tree's metal lace to attach these. I started off by measuring out the lace, wrapping it around the can. So I made sure to give myself enough excess to attach it onto our piece of wood. Now you could do that two times, but I decided to just lay the piece I already cut down and measure another piece out and cut it. Now it's time for us to bring in the stapler. I want to make sure that our lace stays on our piece of wood and this stapler is gonna ensure that that happens. Really? Really? Got to be kidding me every single time. <laughs> At some point, I'm gonna learn my lesson and check that stapler before I start stapling. The problem is, is I always feel like I put a ton in there to start with and I got, you know, several videos <laughs> before I gotta worry about it. However, that never seems to work out. Now you're probably wondering, Brandy, how the hell are you gonna staple underneath that can? Well, this is just the trick. I am going to leave just enough space for that can to shimmy itself inside of the metal lace. So I see how I'm like kind of, mm, you gotta mess with it, okay? Because if you cut it too big, it's gonna slide right on through. That, that probably came out wrong. I mean, get your metal lace on there however you need to get it on there. This worked out for me. You know, I stapled one side, measured, stapled the other side, and then we are just shimmying our little can right on down. There were some smudges in the paint. No big deal. I just took the little sponge brush that I was using, went right over the little sections, and nobody's gonna know but me. You can leave your piece plain. I love using women in my art. I think they're absolutely beautiful and can just add something to anything you're DIYing. So we're gonna take this stencil that I have and use a little bit of Tim Holtz Distress Texture Paste and we're going to put a thin layer over this. And then I'm gonna also take some sections of this and pop around in different areas on our board just to enhance the whole piece. Keep in mind, if you don't have any fancy schmancy tools to spread out your texture paste, it's no big deal. I have used a plastic spoon before. Use what you have on hand, just make sure it's a nice flat, Piece, you could even use a popsicle stick. Also ensuring that your piece is taped down to whatever you're applying this on will stop from bleed through underneath your stencil.
I personally recommend waiting at least 24 hours before sealing over this piece. And a great idea would be to seal it with some Rust-Oleum clear matte spray paint. This way you can just kind of spray it over your metal lace and the cans, kind of get a nice seal on everything, especially if you plan on reselling this piece. And then once it's all dry, pop in your florals. If you want to put some real florals in here, just take a drill gun and screw in some holes in the bottom of your cans. For this three piece floral wall decor set, figure out what side you want to be your front and then pick out three colors. I'm gonna use Antique Waverly Wax on our middle size one, DIY paint in the white swan on our large piece, and a mix of Waverly's Ballet Slipper and Folk Arts Vintage Tea Rose for our tiny piece. I used a baby wipe to apply the Antique Waverly Wax and just grab some paint brushes to apply the paint on the other two boards. And keep in mind, if you're reselling pieces like this, you want to paint the back. I did not paint mine. Truth be told, I was thinking about decoupaging the back of these and making them reversible. We didn't, so now we're here. <laughs> we're gonna take some of these saw tooth hammer in hangers and just hammer them in the back. They are down in my Amazon affiliate link if you're interested. Now we're gonna need to bring in the wonky hammer. I love these hangers. They're super easy to apply. Just, you know, watch your fingers as you go. And you can always put a little bit of tacky glue, a little bit of Gorilla Glue around where you're hammering them in. So they're really not gonna come out that sucker. I wanna keep these pieces super easy and super simple. We're gonna take this floral foam and cut it into three sections. This was in a pack that I picked up from Dollar Tree and it's just a small little piece. It's really easy to cut through with this little Cricut tool. And we're gonna make three slivers. Now I have made pieces like this before and I use a drill bit, or you can use a jigsaw to cut through the back of the wood up to the front of the wood to create a floral wood planter. Or you could take the drill bit and drill a hole down in there so you can then stick florals in there. For those of you that do not like using tools, and if you wanted to recreate this and have somebody cut your wood at Home Depot and then come home and make this, here's how you do it. Grab that floral foam, cut it on down, use some tacky glue and stick it right to the top. Super easy and you do not need any extra tools. Let this dry for a little bit, couple hours, and then you're able to come back and start applying whatever florals you want in here and you can switch it out as often as you like. I created a base using a one by six by four. I didn't really measure it. I just kind of eyeballed that sucker. And then I took a one by two, cutting down two different sizes, making sure that each side matched and one was slightly larger than the other. For this little decorative drawer riser, since we have all of our little pieces cut and our base, you can go right ahead and use a nail gun if you want to, or you can use a stapler. I, since I am low on Ryobi batteries, and I got it in here in this glue gun, we're going to use some tacky glue and some hot glue for our adhesive. Please keep in mind that if you are selling things like this, it is also best to make sure that you're using the nails to ensure that your hold is not going to come apart. That's not saying that I don't have complete faith in my tacky glue here and my hot glue. I just know that if you pop a couple nails in here after using tacky glue or wood glue, you are for sure not gonna have your piece falling apart. But for those of you who are always looking to not use tools or just the easy way to attach some pieces, using wood glue, Gorilla Glue Gel, E6000, or tacky glue give a really good, solid, long lasting hold. Just using hot glue can tend to wear down in time or if you put it on a hot windowsill or hang it on a door and it gets hot enough, your piece is gonna fall apart. And it's always a good idea to make sure you're using the right glue for the right material. So please keep that in mind. Remember when I said two sides were larger than the other? It was at this moment that I realized I started gluing them one completely wrong. 
Well, it's a good thing I'm not using a nail gun because I done glued the wrong end together. <laughs> oh, please don't rip up the whole background. Okay, I got that section off. <laughs> Alrighty, now I'm going to peel this stuff off so we can put new glue on here. <sighs> There are a couple ways you could cut the sections to create the ends of the drawer, but I just decided to cut two smaller pieces that were the absolute size of the wood and then two sides that were the absolute size of the entire width of the piece. And then that was going to be the front and the back of the drawer riser. At this point, you can clamp it down or just set it off to the side and let it dry like I did and then find whatever little pegs you want. These are little snowmen from Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna use some tacky glue to attach them upside down for our legs. And I can tell you that if you cannot find these at Dollar Tree, check out Hobby Lobby and Walmart. They both have cool little wood pieces like this. I wanna use this box for a couple things, possibly for my own personal use, possibly for some staging, for some videos. So I want to keep it pretty neutral and I'm going to use this pretty silver cover, blah, 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 <laughs> color that I have from Waverly. And no, it doesn't have a little sticker on the top to tell me what color it actually is. It's just a pretty silver color. Feel free to seal over this if you want to. Just make sure that if you're going to use this by a sink to like put some hand soap in that it is water friendly to prevent any extra damage. I also took a little handle that I had laying around. I pick up these all the time from Lowe's. You can catch them on clearance often for like 99 cents. So I always grab them. This turned out so high end. I love it so much. As always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed all these wood DIYs. And until next time.